Hi again, I'm Roger Dean of Australisis and Marx. This is the beginning of our performance number two. And as with performance number one, we began with a piece related to Louis Couperin, the 17th century composer who was also involved with improvising traditions and who, as it turns out, was in the thick of a whole lot of argument and debate amongst musicians as to how instruments should be tuned. While I'm not going to go into that, you would have heard a bit of comment about tuning systems and micro tunings where we use pitches other than those of the current day piano from Sandy Evans in her talk in an earlier video. And this piece that is now coming is again based on the same Louis Couperin Fantasia, the unmeasured prelude <clears throat> that we've heard before, but also it uses an expression of that sequence of notes, that theme in a different tuning system. And then we respond to those tuning issues, the complexities they imply, both by juxtaposition with conventional piano tunings and by electroacoustic and acoustic responses, improvisations. So this is uh, Louis meets Pelog. Pelog being the name of a tuning system from Indonesia, which Sandy talked about, and which is rather more complex than represented here, but I think you'll be able to detect its impact. It does not sound quite like a normal piano. So enjoy, uh, Louis meets Pelog.
Yeah, so the piece is a result of my research, which focused on how much thermal change needs to be in a sand for people to notice that sand has changed. And so putting that into practice in the piece means it's in the piece where nothing much is happening. <laughs> 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 which is essentially one core element of drone music. So it is, I opted out to, to make a, a drone piece. And like, um, so, so one of the core features in there is that it is actually just one big event, but it is constantly changing. So, so that's one of the main focuses of the piece. Another important part of at least part uh, of at least some genres of drone music is that it focuses on the physical aspects of sound, which means it is very loud. Um, <laughs> so for any person who knows there's sensitive to loud sounds over there are a couple of headphones. So if anybody wants to grab one of those, that's totally fine. Um, another thing I could probably explain just the name, it's called Grin Drone. So the drone part is probably self-explanatory. The grin, or rather grind part, com com comes from the genre of grind core, which prides itself, well, probably should go, drone music very often is very long as well, like it's easy to have a piece to be between 30 to 60 minutes, whereas grind core uh, prides itself on very short songs, most famously probably the band Napalm Death with their 0.3 second masterpiece of uh, suffering. So with a five minute piece I fall somewhere in between so I combined the two names and that's the piece we're gonna hear hopefully. <laughs>
yeah, I wrote El Totono um, for my website <laughs> um, as three uh, separate lovely works um, that stood up on their own. Um, I wanted them to to have like me embedded in the works and to have glitch and my tonality embedded in the works, um, which is kind of my compositional ethos. So um, there are three works and the first is Tula and the second is Ultra and the third is Shine. Tula is based on strength and it says in the program that it ex exists in two worlds. Um, but actually it's, um, it's really based on phonetic patterns. I've used um, these tiny, tiny little rhythmic structures um, and um, drawn them together. Um, and then Ultra, um, I've said that it's the brother of Tula, but actually it's, um, it can stand up on, it, on its own. It, I actually wrote it thinking about the sea. <laughs> this kind of continuum um, and static sea um, and deep, something that was deep and um, resonant. Shine is um, a work which is, um, I mean, it was really, really based on emotion and I tried to connect it to what lots of people around me and what I was feeling at the time, which was, um, you know, we can have times where we are fine and great and then sometimes you get down <laughs> about things but you have to kind of keep going and shining through um very very dark times so in the tombras there are um tombras that really really are bright and then there are tombras which are really really subdued in the work it was a really, really special work to write, although it's there, there are three tiny works. It really incorporated myself as a composer and it was a first, maybe the first work that I genuinely had written to set myself um, on, a, on another stage of being a composer um, because it was going on to a new website and you know, I was elevating myself into something that I, w I actually wasn't sure what I was elevating myself into but I was doing it just through music <laughs> and, um, and I literally just went into the studio for I think it was about a month and just kind of wrote these works and wasn't paid to anything to do <laughs> one thing. I just thought, right, I'll just do them and I'll give them away and they're there. And, and but I think they're absolutely beautiful works. And, um, and the, the artwork that goes with them, it's actually based on the shell and something really organic. And I, I made the artwork and I just made everything. So yeah, I felt like I was a real artist after <laughs> after working on Ultra Journal. <laughs> glitch is my language. And I come from a subculture of glitch music. I think that human beings make mistakes generally. <laughs> and we're not drawn to correction. We are drawn to um, I think it's our natural state of mind to be drawn to acceptance, actually. In cu and culture helps people accept that. I think that glitch is a part of that, actually. When I'm working with glitch, it's a cut or it's the bump or it's a crash or it's a scar on your body or it's something that's not really meant to be there, but it's there. And or it's a kind of like something underneath your skin. In digital music, when you're working with digital music, it's a unique form because glitch is can really be shown in digital music and it's, it's like working with some type of magical formula um, and disturbing these binary numbers um, and it's so exciting to work with um, 
and glitch as a human, you know, in this digital mass of everything. That's how I see glitch as humanity. Thank you.